good evening to one and all. I dare say at times I think it would be easier to tune up a violin for Craig Plain than for me to tune this lovely man. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before. It's like a small woman attempting to pick up a great big man. Not so easy. I trust you'll appreciate the effort. <laughs> sweet, sweet, sweet spirits. How often you have had to hold back your sweetness. Isn't it so? It isn't about being sweet enough for most of you. It's rather about holding back the very sweetness that would seem to exude from your pores. My dear friends, I tell you, help is on the way. <laughs> and I, Estelle, foresee a day wherein you'll not have to hold back at all. Can you imagine it? What a lovely picnic we'll have then. I chanced to visit an old friend of mine and I found her observing a, a movie, I suppose, a video, I suppose you'd call it, a very odd one. I couldn't really make much of it, save that it showed a scene. Oh, that's it. Alvira was the name of it. Alvira, I got that much anyway. A scene wherein this Alvira apparently apprentice to the magical arts had created something of a love potion and inadvertently had given it to all who attended a lovely large picnic and I was there to watch the results of it. Well, well, all I can say is they just couldn't hold back not one. Oh, they were at each other's throats and I mean in the most loving way. And it was quite a riot in the long run, quite funny. Well, in the future I foresee that uh, some of what you call your parties and picnics shall be, well, nowhere near as wild, but certainly love fests, as I believe they like to call them. Why? For there'll come a time when it will be the sheer joy of expressing yourselves that might make you just a bit heady. I see you all holding back, not one excluded here. I understand, don't worry. My dears, I certainly understand. Are you kidding? <laughs> the product of a Victorian civilization such as mine? Oh, I know something of you can't touch. You can scarcely look. <laughs> I was a Taurus, after all, and we're so very fond of touching. It was all I could do. You, my dears, uh, not having to be quite so reserved, still do your best to live in a diplomatic fashion. I must compliment you for it, though I am very happy to report that I myself am done with it. <laughs> I am here this evening to speak about healing and of course we must go to the ancient Greeks 
who knew good and well the truth of that old adage, physician, heal thyself. This then brings me to the heart of my discourse. It has been made plain, I trust, that I come so very often to address the ladies in the group. However, this isn't to say that I don't have the deepest love and respect for the lovely gentlemen who grace us with their presence. So please, dear men, know how welcome you are. And I dare say that any lady to your right or left would be very happy to demonstrate that to you at the proper time. But I am really interested though in communicating and again, dear men, have patience. It's something that the women need perhaps more than you do. It's got everything to do with receptivity. For the first part of the exercise then, I must ask you gentlemen to politely sit it through. You'll understand why presently. For the first exercise is called the cleaning of the womb. <coughs> womb. <laughs> In that only the most rare of you gentlemen might have one. <laughs> I should ask you again to but politely sit this one through. All right, ladies. Won't you take a deep breath? Draw in the lovely air of spirit and draw it in again. You are breathing the air that has circulated around this planet for eons. Treat yourself then to ancient oxygen. And have a feeling, my dears, that all power is given to you in this very moment to push out of yourself what you do not want to receive. Focus on the womb. And as you breathe freely and deeply and do continue, you start to will out of your womb all that has ever entered it that you did not really want to be there. Yes, you can do it. Breathe, my dears, breathe. I can't be that hard of hearing that I hear no one breathing. <coughs> Inhale, exhale. As you do, send out from you all that you do not want to retain. Perhaps all that you never really wanted to receive. In thought you can do it. Breathe, my dears. Breathe. And send it out as you exhale. All, all, all that's ever troubled you concerning your own womanhood. Send it out from you now. You can, you know. I invite you. Good, good, good. Very good. Continue though. You're not quite done. Send it away, please. Far away. Go into your childhoods if you must. Adolescence. Did you invite everything? I think not. Rid yourselves of past memories. 
you've got the right to do it. By nature we are receptive as women, but we can also be selective as women. And from this point forward, I trust you shall be. Send out the pain, the discomfort. Send out emotions connected with this part of the body that have only brought you heartbreak that might get to this day. Will it far from you, my dears, and again regain control of your own sweetness? You need only be receptive to spirit if that is your choice. And to mortals only at your selection. This must needs be one of the most sacred of all the privileges of any woman. To what shall she be receptive? I dare say even a man that you love can at times pollute you, cast it out, you need it not, it is not a proof of your love for him, but rather a filter that catches all unworthy and sends it right back out again. Very good, there we go. There's the lovely, lovely pink glow I needed to see ere we could move forward. You can do this, of course, at your leisure at any time. All right, very good. Now, gentlemen, you can join us with what follows. For the next thing that needs to be, uh, shall we say, uh, cleansed, is what we would call the colon. Yes. And that we've all got, you know. <laughs> what is the colon, if not that part of the body that is meant to get rid of what we do not need? Observe, my dears, this has many levels of application. I am not referring alone to a physical organ of the human body though I choose to focus there simply as a point of anchor. I am referring to that mechanism in your psyches, each one, designed by God Almighty to get rid of all that that you have already extracted the good from, that must needs eject unnecessary experience out of your psyche once and for all. Those that can't accomplish it oft suffer from that terrible thing called colon cancer. You don't want it. So breathe, my dears, all of you. Oxygen's free, won't you help yourselves? Taking great draughts of it would be my suggestion. We are all of us here in a healing bubble. Won't you take advantage of it? and breathe out from yourselves all that you feel you might have retained at any time for any reason. It's your chance, my dear friends. Get rid of it. Breathe deeply. Get rid of it. I trust there is not even one of you here who thinks you've got not to get rid of. For that one, I feel a great pity due to the blindness that would prompt such a conclusion. From what I can see, none are exempt. You all have got things you've held on to. Won't you just blow them away? Go on. Call it a game if you like, a parlor game. 
Aren't we seated here in the parlour? Play the game. I tell you it shall prolong your physical endurance and quality of life. That's it. Be a good sport, won't you? Humor a ghost. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I do not speak in exaggeration when I say I see three cases of disease averted. I am speaking most seriously now. I see three cases of disease averted. Get rid of it. You're not taught this in your cultures, my dears. But that is no reason not to avail yourselves of it now. Very good, very good. Now let us proceed to that very, very magnificent organ known as the liver. Located on the right side of the body, just about even with your elbow, perhaps a little above, and on that right part of the body, of the torso, lies your magnificent liver. Won't you flood it with light and breathe toxins out of it? Yes, yes, yes. It's like a bag. In many cases, full of black silt. It's all right. You can mentally squeeze it, twist it, wring it out, and even put your hand into it etherically and draw out of it the pellets of black. The stones that are there accumulated. And the breath keeps the organ pumping and healing and glowing. Flood it with light. Heal your livers, my dear. Heal your livers. Oh, you'll feel so much better. I dare say your faces shall be less bloated afterwards if you do it correctly. Wonderful, wonderful. I'm so grateful to you all, especially those that are participating. Your liver that which connects you to the astral body, a very precious organ. And now to that magnificent, magnificent organ known as the heart, right in the center of your chest. Again, breathing, breathing, breathing as you like. Feel that heart come into a wondrous new sense of tone. It is a muscle after all. Think lovely thoughts about it. I am referring to the organ proper versus the sentimental counterpart. Heal your hearts, my dears. Won't you please, just with your thought. God knows you seldom think of it. Do so now, won't you? And do yourself a grand favor. Heal your hearts. Think beautiful thoughts of your physical heart. Think of it as a dynamo that shall never run out, that is healing itself as you think healing thoughts about it. All is subject to change, and your mind molds your matter. Heal it, my dears, won't you? Very good. Last but not least, move up to your lovely brains and heal those, won't you? Breathing, breathing, breathing. Consider the brain. Crowning the spinal column itself. The brain. 
such a magnificent creation, so little thought of, so little appreciated. Heal the brain, heal the brain, heal your brains, my dears. Doesn't it sound lovely? Heal your brains, I say. <laughs> God helps those that help themselves. Physician, heal thyself, is the edict from on high. We but comply. Oh, my dear friends, heal yourselves. Heal yourselves. Heal yourselves and you'll heal the world. Lovely, lovely, lovely. The glow is magnificent, very good, very, very, very good. My dear, dear friends, God bless you. These exercises can obviously be done at any time, by anyone, anywhere. I but chose to walk you through them this night, noting the dark clouds, that had fastened themselves to the various physical organs of your physical bodies. How could I sit here and act like I didn't see them? <laughs> so, now we are ready to proceed. My dear, dear friends, just for a moment, Put yourselves in my place. Having lived a life, having reviewed it countless times, having seen the glaring errors, and perhaps even the wondrous good that was done, one can only be left with a sincere sentiment to do more, far more. So it is then that when opportunities arise, and I can address lovely groups such as this, I fly to the occasion. With this very simple set of exercises, you've done good to your bodies, and in that sense, good to yourselves. Perhaps herein lies the secret of all life, to do good to oneself. But what is good after all? Immediately, the worldly man thinks of indulgence. Not always good. Good, we would say, is that thing which causes the self to know itself. That is good. You have come to know yourselves just a little bit better, I trust and I hope, by simply having attended to your various organs. It's almost like brushing your teeth, isn't it? You simply put attention upon that which needed attention within the domain of yourself. The first commandment supposedly given to Moses was what? I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no strange gods before me. Let us dissect it. I am the Lord thy God. Immediately what is drawn in one pointed fashion to that which one is. When we say I am in daily life, we are obviously referring to ourselves, aren't we? There must be a connection here. So that I am must indeed be the self of yourself, the you of you, the one that looks back at you when you look in a mirror. The Lord thy God was an odd statement that and to have no strange gods before this can only mean one thing 
that one should not allow any outer impedimenta to stand betwixt you and you. Yes. Let us then be at one, appreciating the privilege of being at one, knowing that perhaps a bit more time allotted to discover that one that you are, that I am, can only bring us yet more fully into that sweetness and that light. The greatest spirit lights that have ever walked your planet have all been supremely aware of themselves and their self. It isn't about the mate, my dears. It isn't about the children. It isn't about the career. It isn't about money. It isn't about power. It isn't about family. It's about you. It's always about you. The grand mystery of the ages. To not lose sight of you. To stay so very close to you. To be constantly with yourself. And from that point, then obviously and quite naturally, you'll find yourself dealing justly with all of life. Such is the way of it, my dears. You'll all discover it when you drop those lovely bodies that you lug about. <laughs> In that lovely, lovely celebration called death. Well, how happy you'll be after that. <laughs> yes. And then you'll see how supremely alone you are. And that is the greatest celebration of all. You who would have placed your happiness upon the shoulders of him, or upon the opinion of her, shall suddenly find all of that quite meaningless. And you and you alone are your own judge and jury, your own friend and foe, your own enemy and best friend. It's all you, the rest is all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Though you must keep yourselves occupied on the earth plane in some venture of good, mustn't you? That I see most of you occupy yourself in doing. Well, God bless you all in that way. I look into your minds and find there the most beautiful, beautiful visions, the likes of which I've not had. And I see about me not but God and the Goddess in full bloom. I am as a child in a garden of roses surrounded by you. The last thing I shall bring to the fore is this very deft vision. Where shall you be in 1,000 years? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. The humor obviously arises and that collectively none have sought out the picture. <laughs> At your own time, my dears, I invite you, most literally, 1,000 Earth years, simply as a demarcation of time, hence, into the future, whither you shall all proceed, where shall you be? I do not ask it facetiously, I ask it in that I know good and well that it lies within your scope and your purview to observe it. I leave you with a sweet invitation. God bless you all.
You are so magnificent. Estelle told us <clears throat> last week that these, uh, <laughs> these events that she called teas were, um, were, were actually brief events, that they were not drawn out. She said that a tea in, in England, I guess, which is where she was from, was a very was short and sweet you came to tea you talked you did your little thing you had tea and whatever crumpets or whatever <laughs> and then you said goodbye and left <laughs> and that was that and she made a point of telling us that she wanted our teas to be brief and i think the reason she did it was to now we're only doing this for three weeks running and this is of course the second week but um <clears throat> so that we would be able to, though, because you know we all have very busy lives. We would all be able to drop in, as you all have done so kindly tonight, and you know have our tea, have our our experience, and then just uh, call it a night <laughs> and be on our way, so that we wouldn't be detained, you know, if we had other places to go and things to do. Um, so anyway, um, for that reason, I I hereby <laughs> conclude the tea. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the tea.